Hello everyone. In today's class, we will derive an expression of uh, we will derive an expression of EMF induced in the armature of a DC machine. Now we all know that DC machine can operate either as a generator or the DC machine can operate as a motor. So in both the cases, that means whether it is operating as motor or it is operating as a generator, in both the cases you will find that a EMF is being induced. in the armature conductors of the dc machine so we we will make an attempt to derive an expression derive a mathematical expression of uh, emf which is induced in the armature of a dc machine now uh, it may be noted that the emf induced in the armature of a dc machine when it is working as a generator is termed as generated emf or generated emf in the armature when the machine operates as a generator whereas when the machine is operating as a motor in that case the emf induced in the armature winding is uh, widely referred by the term back emf the reason is that in case of motoring action we give electrical energy as the input in the form of some voltage source and what happens due to this motoring action what happens that emf is being induced in the armature conductors due to the rotation of the armature now as per lenz's law what happens the emf induced in the armature of the dc motor will oppose the very cause of it now in case of motor the very cause of the rotation of armature can be attributed to the voltage which is applied as input so what happens in case of motoring action in case of motoring action emf induced in the armature winding actually opposes the applied voltage to the motor or supply voltage to the motor that's why the name back emf is there since emf induced in the armature winding during motoring action opposes the applied voltage or the supply voltage which is applied to the armature terminals so that's why we call the uh, that's why we use the term back emf so the word back emf is uh categorically used to refer the emf induced in the armature of a dc motor on the other hand the term generated emf on the other hand the term generated emf is uh, categorically used to refer the emf induced in the armature of a dc generator so it is uh, worthy of mention that whether the machine is working as a generator or motor in both the cases the mathematical expression for emf induced in the armature winding happens to be same so we will derive an expression of emf induced in the armature of a dc machine now that dc machine can either operate as a motor or it can operate as a generator so when it operates as a motor that induced emf in the armature will be termed as back emf and when it is working as a generator it will be termed as generated emf now let us uh, consider this diagram this diagram uh, depicts a dc machine having two poles you can see here north pole is shown here and south pole is shown here and these are the field coils the blue colored coils which are shown these are the field coils so what can you notice is that the number of turns in this pole you can see it is how many number of turns it's actually three number of turns uh, just for the time being you you um, uh, allow me to represent this duster by this field pole so if this is the field pole you have one wire coming from the back and it is coming to the front then again it is going behind the this field pole again it is coming to the front so in this way the windings are made so you see although here i have shown three turns for the field coils but it's not the actual fact actually in a dc machine the field coil has got very large number of turns maybe 100 turns or 200 turns that depends upon the design but uh, the the number of turns in the main field pole the number of turns in the main field pole is never 3 but just due to convenience i have shown here three turns but again i am repeating that in a dc machine as far as the main field pole as far as the main field pole is concerned the number of turns is very large usually say 100 turns or 200 turns 
depending upon the design of the machine but here i am only showing three just for ease of drawing and convenience nothing else so that point should be kept in mind that it is not actual the thing you don't have three turns anyway here i have shown how many turns if you count from here from the behind from the behind it is coming to the front so this is one turn again from behind it is coming to the front so this is second turn again from behind it is coming to the front so this is third turn so you see there are three number turns in the uh, top pole and likewise you will find that there are another three number turns at the bottom pole so what i want to emphasize is that i want to emphasize that the number of turns which are being placed on this pole and the number of turns which are being placed on this pole they are equal why they are equal because to ensure that the mmf that is magnetomotive force developed by this pole and magnetomotive force developed by this pole they should be equal what is the formula for magnetomotive force the formula for magnetomotive force or mmf is number of turns multiplied by current so you can clearly see here that the field coil on this pole and field coil on this pole they are connected in series right so whatever current is passing through this field coil the same current is also passing through this field coil so you should be very careful to observe that if if is the field current then that same if field current is also entering this coil okay so here also the field current is if so you see field current is if let's say here the number of field turns let's say if the number of field turns is nf nf so in this case also the number of field turns is also nf so what is the formula for field mmf nf into if that means the field mmf by this pole and field mmf by this pole they are equal why because they are carrying the same current because they are connected in series and the number of turns are same now this is the armature core what is armature core armature core is nothing but it's a cylindrical structure but i should mention that this cylindrical structure this cylindrical structure by which we are trying to denote the by which we are trying to denote the armature core is a cylindrical structure no doubt but it is not solid cylinder it's a laminated it's a laminated cylindrical structure so the armature core is definitely a cylindrical structure or somewhat it is similar to a cylindrical structure the armature core but this armature core is not a solid cylinder it is laminated laminated cylindrical structure that means what we are we are making up this kind of cylindrical structure by placing circular lamination which are known as armature core stamping one over another such that the slot and teeth are aligned and this kind of structure is developed okay so this is done in order to reduce eddy current loss and you will you will learn that in a dc machine what happens when the armature core is moving so when the armature core is moving it is encountering different flux or it is or it is encountering a field flux whose strength is not same whose strength is varying so due to that reason there is a eddy current loss also there is a rotational hysteresis loss in the armature core so in order to uh, minimize the eddy current loss we are using laminated core now it it, it should be noted that for minimizing the hysteresis loss we have to use advanced magnetic material whose loop area of the bh curve is very small however for minimizing the eddy current loss we are using the laminated cylindrical structure not for minimizing hysteresis loss for minimizing hysteresis loss you have to use advanced magnetic material whose loop area of the bh is very small now you can have a look here if you go by the lines of flux plot you will find that you apply right hand grip rule what you have to do you have to uh, make sure that these four fingers of the right hand are such directed that the nails of these four fingers are in the direction of current so if you move like this the thumb will give you the magnetic lines of flux so this is the magnetic lines of flux direction which one the thumb so you see from here this pole phase lines of flux are leaving so this will be your, this will be your north pole and in this case the lines of flux are entering this pole phase so this is your south pole so what do you see that this axis is the axis which is named as field axis or the polar axis so what is the meaning of field axis or polar axis field axis or polar axis is that axis along which the magnetic axis of field coil is directed you see the magnetic axis of the field coil the magnetic axis of the field coil is directed along this line so this is your field axis or 
the polar axis. Now you may also notice that along the field axis or the polar axis, air gap is a minimum. Whereas if you move 90 degree from the field axis, that is this line, you find that air gap is maximum. So this is known as interpolar axis or Q axis or quadrature axis. Now, if you imagine that there is an observer sitting on the surface of the armature core. So what do you imagine? There is an observer who is sitting on the surface of the armature core. So when the armature core is here, it will see more lines of flux leaving this thing, this place. So here flux density is more. But when this armature core portion moves to this position, the observer sitting over here will see that very less lines of flux are there. When this part of the armature core, when this part of the armature core comes to this position, the observer sitting here will observe that less lines of flux are coming. Because now it has moved into an area which is known as interpolar region or interpolar axis. So at this point the flux density which will be seen by the observer sitting on the armature core will be very small. So you see that when the armature core is rotating between these two field poles, the armature core is subjected to a flux density distribution which is not always constant. The flux density will be higher along this portion and it will be lower along this portion that is the interpolar axis. Okay. Now let's move to one thing that let us uh, make ourselves clear regarding the nomenclature. What are the symbols? The diameter of the armature core is denoted by capital D. What is phi? Phi is nothing but flux per pole. What is P? P is the number of poles. So please be remember that here P is not pair of poles. There is a scope of making confusion or mistake by uh, the term pair of poles and number of poles. So here I have clearly written it is number of poles. It is not pair of poles. What about uh, your V? V is the peripheral speed of the armature pole. Or you can say the tangential speed. If, what is V? V is the peripheral speed of the armature core or the tangential speed. That means the V. Now what is L? L is nothing but it is the length of the armature core. You can look at the diagram. What is capital L? Capital L is the length of the armature core. That means if you think the armature core as a cylinder, then the length of the cylinder is denoted by capital L, which is also indicated in the diagram. L is the armature core length. What is Z? Z is nothing but it is the total number of armature conductors. What is Z? Total number of armature conductors. And what about A? Small a is nothing but number of parallel path in armature circuit. So A is number of parallel path, number of parallel paths in armature circuit. Obviously you know that for lap winding A will be equal to P and for wave winding A will be equal to 2. Now let me allow or let me de derive the expression for the peripheral speed. Now what you do, uh, you just imagine there is a wheel. Let's say this is the wheel, this is the wheel. Now what is the diameter of the wheel? Capital D. And let's say the wheel is moving at a speed of n RPS. RPS means what? Revolution per second. Revolution per second means in one second how many revolution is being made. In one second how many revolutions is being made. That is your RPS, revolution per second. So this n is nothing but it is the speed in RPS, revolution per second. That means in one second how many revolution is made. So obviously in this case, in one second how many revolutions will be made? n number of revolutions because speed is n, speed is n RPS. So in one second it will make n number of revolutions. So that is your n. Now you imagine that this V is being painted on the rim. That means what I am painting the, I am painting the outer edge. I am painting the outer edge of the wheel like this. I am painting the outer edge of the wheel. So I am painting the outer edge of the wheel like this. So now if I allow it to roll on a flat surface. So what I have done, I have painted the outer rim of the wheel by a paint and I am allowing it to rotate. So when it is rolling over the flat surface, what you will see that when this wheel has rotated or revolved by one revolution, the flat surface will have a paint because the outer rim of the wheel has been painted. So if I roll the wheel, so in one revolution, a line will be there on the flat surface over which the, over which the wheel is rolling. 
and the length of that line will be obviously the circumference of the wheel what is the circumference of the wheel circumference of the wheel is pi d so obviously the length of this line will be also pi d because i am assume that wheel has rolled one revolution over this portion so this length will be pi d now if it is making n number of revolution in one second so how much is the distance travel in one second in one revolution it is covering a linear in one revolution it is covering a linear distance of pi d so in n number of revolution in n number of revolution it will cover a distance of pi d n but this n is what speed in revolution per second so in one second it is making n number of revolution so if i ask how much is the length covered in one second so length covered in one second will be equal to n multiplied by length covered in one one revolution what is the length covered in one revolution pi d but in one second it is cover but in one second it is making n number of revolution so what is the length covered in one second length covered in one second is pi d n so we say that peripheral velocity v equals to we say peripheral velocity v equals to pi d n but please remember here n is written in small letter so n is written in small letter means we imply n is in the unit of rps that is revolution per second okay so this is the relationship between peripheral velocity v and this uh, armature core diameter d and speed n so this is v equals to pi d n now you can you can imagine that this armature is moving at a speed of n rps this armature core is moving at a speed of n rps you assume generating action so in case of generating action there will be a prime mover needed so that prime mover shaft is mechanically coupled with the shaft of the dc generator and you assume that the prime mover is making the armature core rotate at a speed of n rps so now we have derived the relation between this small n that is rps and peripheral velocity v it is given by v equals to pi dn okay now let's uh, try to find the expression of induced emf in the armature conductors so before we find expression of induced emf in the armature conductors let us make ourselves very clear regarding one thing what is that that what are the number of conductors which are connected in series see if there are z number of armature conductors and if the number of parallel path is a so if someone ask you that what is the number of conductors in each path so you see total number of conductors is z and there are a number of parallel paths so if you want to maintain the resistance or induce emf of each of the parallel path to be same in that case obviously the number of conductors in each parallel path has to be same then only the resistance of each parallel path will be same or the induced voltage in each parallel path will be same only when when we keep the number of conductors in each parallel path equal or same so for that to happen what should be the number of conductors in each parallel path it should be z by a because total number of conductors is z and it has to be divided among a number of parallel path making sure that the number of conductors in each path are equal or same so in that case z by a will be the number of conductors in each parallel path z by a z by a will be the number of conductors in each parallel path for example if you allow me i will give you some examples so that it's easy to comprehend you allow me to draw let's say what i am showing i am representing each conductor by two by two things what are the two things each conductor is represented by a resistance and a emf source because you see when the armature conductor will move in the magnetic field obviously emf will be induced in the armature conductors so what we have done we have represented we have represented each armature conductor by the resistance of that armature conductor and emf induced in that armature conductor let's say emf induced in the armature conductor is nothing but b b average lv b lv you know that emf induced in a conductor of length l moving with velocity v is what b lv here i am writing b average because 
we have to take the average value of flux density in the air gap as we know that the flux density is not uniform throughout the air gap it is high somewhere it is low somewhere so we have taken the average value of flux density in the air gap so that is b average that is blv so emf emf inducing each conductor is blv and this is the resistance of each conductor let me write it rc rc means the resistance of the coil so you see how many conductors you see conductor 1 2 3 4 5 6 so there are six number of conductors so what is z total number of conductors is six what is the number of parallel path you see current will be entering or leaving through brush na current will be entering or leaving through brush so when current ia is entering through brush how many number of parallel when current ia is, is entering the brush how many number of parallel path it is show, it is being uh, having this armature current will see there are how many number of parallel path 1 2 3 4 5 6 so what is a here a is 6 so number of parallel path is 6 and what is the total number of conductors 1 2 3 4 5 6 so you see what is the number of conductors in each path z by a what is z 6 what is a 6 so 6 by 6 1 so you see only one conductor is there in each parallel path now you can increase say z equal to 12 so in that case i have to accommodate how many conductors here i have to accommodate one more conductor like this this is one conductor this is another conductor like this this is one conductor this is another conductor isn't it so in this way you can form an idea that how to find out let me complete this so that it's understandable now you look at if in in this case the total number of conductors is 12 this is one conductor so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 please remember each conductor is represented by two elements each conductor is represented by two elements so what are the two elements a source of voltage and a resistance here also this conductor is is represented by two elements so what are they resistance and source of voltage here resistance resistance and source of voltage 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 isn't it so we are modeling each armature conductors by two elements what are they resistance and a emf source that like a battery or a cell because the armature conductors will have induced emf in them given by blv here we are writing b average to make sure that we are taking the average value of magnetic flux density in the air gap because the uniform density is not there at some point it is more at some point it is less it is less in the interpolar region more in the field uh, axis region or the your direct axis or the polar axis region so that's we are taking the b average so this is the thing that you will have now 12 by 6 that is z by a is how much coming 2 and you see you have two number of conductors in each parallel path so that's what i am saying that if z is the total number of armature conductors and uh, a is the number of parallel path in armature circuit the number of conductors in each parallel path or you can say the number of conductors connected in series number of conductors connected in series will be given by z by a okay now let us apply these concepts which we have discussed till now in order to derive the emf induced in the armature so you see what will be b average what can be b average that means average value of flux density average value of flux density will be given by total flux in the air gap it will be given by total flux in the air gap and divided by the surface area let's say let us uh, do one thing let's say uh, this is our armature core this is our armature core and this is the diameter this is the diameter and this is the core length l so you you take this to be your armature cylindrical so this is your diameter d and this is your core length l so what is the curved surface area i can make it flat 
so now what is this one pi d because remember this was remember this is d na so what is this circumference if this is d what is this circumference if it is a circle pi d so this is pi d and what was l l was the armature core length l was the armature core length so what is the surface area pi d l isn't it so this surface area pi d l is available for the lines of flux to enter and leave so what is the surface area pi d l but what is the total flux in the air gap total flux in the air gap is given by flux per pole multiplied by number of poles that is p phi flux per pole multiplied by number of poles that is flux per pole multiplied by number of poles p phi what is the surface area the surface area is as i have said earlier surface area how much surface area is there for the flux to leave and enter this curved surface area of the armature core what is the curved surface of the armature core this is l and this thing is your pi d so this is pi d into l so we are dividing this thing by pi d l that is p phi divided by pi d l okay so this is our b average what was our b b was we have derived earlier pi d n now what is the number of conductors connected in series it is z by a what is z by a z by a is nothing but it is the number number of conductors number of conductors connected in series number of conductors connected in series or you may also call that number of conductors in each parallel path z by a now emf induced in one conductor emf induced in one conductor let me write as a small ea so what is the emf induced in one conductor blv emf induced in one conductor is what blv but here we will take b average because the flux density distribution may not be uniform in the air gap so we are taking the average value of the magnetic flux density over the air gap we are taking the average value so emf induced in one conductor is given by nothing but b average is given by b average that is blv but how many conductors are connected in series how many conductors are connected in series z by a so you know that when emf sources are in series they get added up when emf sources like battery if you have 10 number of batteries connected in series and say the voltage of each battery is 12 so what is the voltage 120 volt because they are connected in series so here also the number of conductors connected in series is what z by a but what is the emf induced in one conductor emf induced in one conductor is blv so what is the emf induced in the armature winding or what is the net emf induced in all the armature conductors net emf net emf induced in all the armature conductors or net emf induced in the armature winding is nothing but emf induced in one conductor multiplied by number of conductors connected in series that is ea multiplied e suffix a. this is uh, okay let me simply write e only then only there is no confusion otherwise you might uh, have a tendency to cancel this a and this a let me write e so what is e emf induced in one conductor given by b average lv so what i am saying now that there are z by a number of conductors in series z by a number of conductors are connected in series and emf induced in each conductor is what e so the net emf induced is nothing but emf induced in one conductor multiplied by number of conductors connected in series as we know that when emf sources are connected in series the value gets added up so this is the emf induced in the armature conductors z by a into e now let us substitute the value so as to arrive at some standard expression which with with which we are already familiar okay so let us uh, derive that so in in order to do that uh, i will make use of earlier expression which i have derived okay so what is the emf induced in the armature e equals to z by a multiplied by e where e is the emf induced in one armature conductor and z by a number of armature conductors are connected in series so z by a what was the expression for e it was b average l into v 
Now, furthermore, what was the expression for B average? If you remember, B average was nothing but P phi divided by pi d L. So this is what was the expression for V? It was pi d n. So now, if you simplify uh, this pi and this pi gets cancelled, this d this d get cancelled, this l this l gets cancelled. So we have uh, p phi z small n by a. So EMF induced in the armature winding of a DC machine is given by p phi z n by a. Now please remember here small n is nothing but speed in rps revolution per second so <clears throat> if you want to derive your expression in terms of rpm that means you want the armature speed to be expressed in rpm so you don't have to do anything extra you simply replace this speed in R, uh, this small n so you you replace the small n which is the speed in rps by capital n by 60 that means what we what we can say is that if n is the speed in rpm if n is the speed in rpm if n is the speed in rpm so what have to be done for getting the speed in rps you have to divide by 60 so <coughs> n by 60 is nothing but it is the speed in rps okay so what we have done we have simply divided the speed in rpm by 60 so that we get the speed in rps revolution per second so now you can replace this small n by this capital N by 60. So in that case it will become P phi Z n by 60 a. Or if you want to keep the speed in RPS in that case this is the expression P phi Z n by a. Or if you want to express in RPM then it is P phi Z n by 60. Okay. So this is the expression for EMF induced in the armature of a DC machine. Now this uh, expression is same for both motoring action and generating action. But only thing is the terminology which we use in case of generating action we tell it is the generated emf and in case of motoring action we call it to be the back emf because it opposes the supply voltage or applied voltage okay thank you that's